So why do divorces and relationships in general fail? We're going to be talking about that this week on episode 162 of The Relaxed Mail. This is The Relaxed Mail, a show that comes to you each week helping men to remove the nice guy from their life so they can actually live their life on their terms. Join the host, certified coach, Brian Goodwin, as he helps men step out of their heads and become free from the thoughts that bind them. Hey man, hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail. I am your host, Brian, and I am a men's life coach. I help men who are going through divorce to come out on the other side being stronger, being more confident, being more alive than what they were when they first started the, through the whole process. And we're going to be talking today about why divorces even happen. Why do relationships fail when they fail? And there's a few reasons. There's, I mean, in all reality, whenever you're dealing with people, you've got as many different reasons, and I'm using quote, you know, air quotes on that, reasons why a marriage fails as there are actual people around. So to to actually try to point down what causes a marriage to fail, we're going to get to. It's actually the very last point that I want to make. So you got to set through a couple of other items, and then we're going to get to the true meat of the matter, why a marriage really does fail, why the, why the elements are there. But before we begin, if this is your first time listening to the show, hello, welcome, glad to have you, man, and uh, pleased to hear that you have uh, decided to see what the Relaxed Mail was all about. This is a show that helps men become better men. I help men who are going through a horrendous divorce. Usually these divorces are very complicated, very emotionally draining. They're, both sides of the of the party are just in survival mode. And I help men to transition through that divorce to go from being a married man, going through a chaotic hellstorm known as divorce and come on a, on the other side as a better man. It is actually possible. It is very doable. It takes a lot of work, but it is something that can be done. And that's what I would love helping men do is to help them see that they can actually get through the other side and, and be stronger with it. So what, why do divorces actually fail? Well, the biggest one is actually the only one that's ex- I've deemed as an acceptable reason to actually have a divorce. Those are your three A's. You've got abuse, addiction, or adultery. Say, have a abusive relationship. Maybe you're being abused. Maybe you're be- being the abuser. Then it's a, I see no problem with the other party going bouncing, saying, I'm out of here, not going to do this anymore. Another reason is addiction, whether it is to some type of chemical or some type of, of action. Now, when I say addiction, I, I, I personally, I have a very distinct line as to what addiction is, but I use addiction because of the, it's three A's. But it's essentially what I'm also referring to is not only just addictions, but particular habits, destructive habits that you may have, coping mechanisms. The third one is actually the adultery. You go out, you find somebody else to sleep with. Your wife goes out, finds somebody to sleep with. You know what? That is, that's absolutely okay to go ahead and have a divorce over. Why is that? Because all three of those destroy trust. A marriage needs trust to actually be able to grow. You have to be able to trust the person. You have to be able to trust them in your worst times. You have to be able to trust them in when they're in their worst times. And that trust is absolutely crucial. You're not going to have a, a happy marriage unless you have trust. You're not going to have a loving marriage unless there's trust. Nothing can be done in a marriage unless there is you absolutely 100% unequivocally trust the other person. And if they're abusive, you can't trust them. If they're in a, an addict, can't be trusted because that's all they do is lie. 
they cover up their own their own shame of the of their addiction. Then the last one is adultery because well you they've destroyed the trust by sleeping with another another person. Now we've also heard, you may hear people talk about things like well we fell in out of love or something to that effect, uh, and those types of things honestly aren't a good reason to have a divorce. That's usually just people running from a problem and they're going to keep having the problem, same problem as before for the very same reason. And we're going to get into that again, a little bit later on down the road. Another reason why divorces happen is because one side has dropped the ball. Now I can point uh, to the finger uh, saying, oh yeah, it's the wife. And no, actually it's not the wife. The reason why I say it's not the wife is because 70% of women initiate the divorce. If she felt the emotional connection, if she felt that this marriage was going the right direction, she wouldn't go for a divorce, but she feels like she's been trapped. And so she's going to get out of that marriage. She wants something that something different in her marriage. Now, yes, there is an issue where a lot of women these days are having feeling that seven year itch. They're feeling that that midlife crisis that goes on. A lot of men used to have that very same problem, you know, in the 50s, 60s and 70s, 80s, because we men were the breadwinner. Nowadays, that is starting to shift. That's where the women are actually making more money than what the men are. There's more men staying home than what women are. And the roles are are flopping. And so women are taking on the exact same types of struggles that the men used to have. But one of the things that men are able to do is maintain their side of the agreement. And the thing, problem is, is that most men have not ever actually sat down and discussed what the agreement actually was. And the agreement is to keep being the man you were when y'all first got married. And that sounds really weird because, you know, you probably have heard, especially after y'all got got married, somewhere along the way, you heard discussions about, well, you need to improve this. You saw women trying to change their guy, try to get them a little more couth or a little more of this, or a little more of that. And in all reality, those little things like that, those are actually more along the lines of tests than actually seeing if they can, they want to, don't want their man to actually change. They just want to see, can, is the man holding to their agreement? And 90% of the time men kind of grumble about it, but they just, they go ahead and go with it. They bend with it. They fail that particular test. And if you want to know about those tests, I've actually got a blog post and there's a link to it in the, uh, in the show notes about the three tests that women test run on men. They, they test men with these three different types of, of tests. And there's a lot of tests in that. So, <laughs> but anyhow, men, the, the big problem that men face though, is that what we dropped the ball. And this is something, this is why I'm saying men, this is actually a man problem. We are dropping the ball. Because many times a woman marries you because of who you are when y'all got married. That means you were in shape. You were driven. You had purpose. You had a group of masculine friends that you hung around with on, on a very regular basis. And as life carried on, say you had a few kids and as life progressed, all of a sudden you may notice that those friends that you used to have, they're not around anymore. You've got a bunch of her friends, boyfriends and husbands who you're friendly with, but they're not your friends. That drive that you have is now just to get up in the morning, to go to work and come home. And hopefully you can sit down and catch a few minutes of the game. Weekends, you're if it's a, if there's a ball game on, you're stuck in front of that ball game. I've talked about ball sports before. It is, and Karl Marx used to say that the church is the opioid of the people, and I disagree with that because religion is not the opioid. Public sports, professional sports, is today's opioid. People turn to it. 
thinking that they those sports offer some type of uh some type of release. And why does it offer a release? Because there is a an element of controlled violence. And men, yes, men, we need controlled violence in our lives, but trying to replace it with a football game isn't going to work. Replacing it with a basketball game is not going to be fulfilling in your world. You need to have controlled violence. And some guys that do, they go out and they play football themselves. There's there's the weekend pickup game. All right. Well, there's other items to that that need to be addressed because what happens is we actually start letting our four pillars of a relaxed male get weak. We start weakening there. We start, we don't study and we don't expand our mind as much as we, and when I say expand our mind, I don't mean dropping a tab of acid. I mean, expand your mind by reading a book, learning about something, find a passion and pursue that passion. Those are the things that actually make you a lot more interesting than whether or not you like the Cowboys or or well, it's not the uh, what's Houston's team now? It's, I don't even. I think it's it's not the Oilers anymore. It's um, is the Texans? I don't know. Anyhow, <laughs> as you see, I don't follow sports. Uh, I know Dallas just because. Well, that's. I don't even know. Does Houston still have the Astros? Is that still is still uh, still a foot uh, a baseball team? I don't know. It doesn't. Uh, uh, anyhow, I'm getting sidetracked. Doesn't matter. <laughs> we have these four pillars. We have our um, the man's mind, the man's body, the man's soul, the man's community. Those four pillars have to be kept up. If you don't keep them supported, keep them reinforced and keep building up on them. Yeah. Your wife is going to get tired of you. You're going to have those lulls. You're going to really struggle to have a fulfilling marriage. The four pillars are important not only for your family, but also for your community. They, these four pillars are important to men and everybody that's around those particular men. So we have, you need to work on your mind. You need to be finding something you're passionate about and study that, study that passion with an intensity of, of, you know, of a thousand suns, if you want. But also, not just that, but you want to make sure that you stay in shape. And it sounds strange. It's like, well, if I'm studying, how can I be be getting in shape? Well, you can. All right. Don't just sit there on the couch with your hand in your shorts and that's it. You've got to be able to get up, get out, get moving, swing a hammer, you know, See if you can bust it and knock down a tree with a sledgehammer. Doing something physical is is needed for you to be able to become a balanced man. You want to have everybody talks about the decrease in the testosterone in men's lives these, these days. Well, it's because we're all sitting on our butts. We've got a lot of endocrine disruptors that are keeping us from being as manly as we would like to. And so, yeah, you get see guys who are now trying to drag little, little pins across their face to, to open up their, their pores so that they can have hair grow out of their face so they can have a richer, fuller beard. No, you want more hair on your face, get more testosterone going. How do you do that? Stay away from soy for one thing, get rid of the damn soy crap. And there's a bunch of others, but and I'm not, it's not, we're not here to, to bash on, on soy and all the other stuff. It is about, you've got to get your body in shape. Then you also need to have a passion, have a desire, not a desire, a, a, a drive to get something done. That is your, what feeds your soul. That is the man's soul pillar. You have to have a project, a project that you identify with. You are, you find reward from just simply being there and doing and learning from it. And the latest and the last fourth pillar is you need to have men, masculine, strong, masculine, noble men who are around you on a regular basis. Men need a regular injection of masculinity. 
in today's society. And the only way you get that, you don't get that from watching a movie. You don't get that from watching sports. You don't get that from just, you know, from catching up, watching porn. You get that from being around other men doing manly things, chopping down a tree, busting up rocks, throwing rocks, you know, building something, standing shoulder to shoulder with another man. That's when men learn the best. That's when men are being the most manly is when we're working shoulder to shoulder with another guy. These are things that you need to have in your life. And if you have those things, your marriage will be a hundred times stronger than you ever imagined it would be. But yet we don't work on those four pillars and those four pillars get weak. And when those four pillars get weak, guess what? The wife becomes disinterested. She starts to see a lack of adventure in your life because she's along for the ride. She wants to go along with you on this adventure of you becoming the greater man. She wants to be there with you. John Eldridge said it, uh, said it best. Men need three core, have three core passions. According to John Eldridge, those are a battle to fight and an adventure to live and a beauty to rescue. But on the flip side, women have three desires also, and they want to be romanced, be irreplaceable, have a, uh, an irreplaceable role to play. Easier to say than to, to read, and a beauty all your own to unveil, to be irreplaceable in a role to play. That means they want to be beside their man, to be able to go out with their guy and have that adventure. They want to go along with the adventure. They want to be there to see you succeed, yet they're not going to if you don't give them a reason to follow. If you're not seeing that you're having a good time, you're struggling, and that you celebrate in those wins, you're going to have a a time where you're just not connecting. Now, I'm not saying when you're connecting with somebody, you're staying 100% you know, maxed out connection at all times. No, I'm actually saying that there's going to be times that, yeah, yeah, okay, y'all aren't quite as close as you really would like to be. But as you both are continuing to grow, you're both going to support each other. And she's not going to want to leave you because you're not dropping the ball on what your part of the deal was, which is that you are going to continue being the man she wanted to marry when y'all first got married. And I hear some of you saying, well, she just became this fat slob whenever, why do I have to hang her out with, uh, with someone out of shape? Because if you've got someone, if you're be- not in shape, then why should she be in shape? Why? Come on, tell me. Why should she be in shape if you're not willing to be in shape? You want a swimsuit model? Then become the, become a stud buffing man. There, there's a lot. Don't try to dump anything on her because everything that she wants, she's doing, is ninety percent of the time is because you're doing it or you're failing to do it. If you want your wife to be in shape, you have to show her why being in shape is a good thing. So that means you get out, you start doing all the hard work. And then when she starts seeing the attention you're getting from other women, she's going to go, oh, wait a minute, I better get my happy. She's going to try to do the easy route first and shame you into, into becoming out of shape again. She's going to want to make sure that you get back into out of shape so she doesn't have to do the hard work. But if you stay true to her. You don't succumb to the women. She will finally realize, oh, wait a minute. He's not going to stop getting in, being in shape. I guess I better start getting into shape. And she will actually start doing some work to get herself down to where she looks good in a, in a swimsuit. The same as you'll look good. You won't want to walk around in a, in a baggy t-shirt when going to the pool. You'll take the t-shirt off and you'll stand there in, in your shorts like you're supposed to. And you'll look, you'll, you'll notice the girls start to turn and look at you. You'll notice that your wife starts to turn and look at you. And when your wife finally gets the, the hint that you're not leaving, she's going to ensure that you don't want to leave. And then when you are a, becoming a great interdependent couple, not a codependent, 
y'all, your, your lives will transform in amazing ways. Now with that, I wanted to go ahead and let's talk about the next reason marriages fail is because emotional connections faded. Now this is often because again, we get busy. You know, I'm sitting in the living room talking, uh, watching television. My wife's in, in the bedroom watching television. Are we going to have a good connection doing that? Well, no. It's kind of just kind of talk to each other for a second or two as one pat goes across the other's field of vision. No, that's not the best emotional connection you can have. And eventually what's going to happen is that is that connection will start to fade and somebody who is new and exciting can very well possibly step into place. That's going to be somebody who they spend a lot of time with. That's going to be somebody who they spend their their days with. So, is it going to be is it going to be Matt from accounting or is it going to be, you know, going to be John next door? If you help her and help keep a strong emotional connection, people are easily going to stray. Now, one of the big things about the emotional connection is how society has gotten emotional connections completely wrong. Because they actually, they have, they, they want men to come to their wife and talk about their problems. And because they're wanting to talk about their problems, you're wearing your wife out. You come to her crying because, you know, your boss yelled at you. Is not going to do you any good. It's not making you look masculine in any way. Being an anxiety-ridden blob of emotion is doing nothing but wearing your wife down. Because the truth of the matter is women are receptacles of positive energy. They can handle negative. Didn't say they can't handle negative. But they like to have positive energy given to them by the people they love. Men, we're able to handle receiving negative energy. We're designed to handle negative energy, actually. Those negative thoughts and all that that people come to us about and share with us, that's fine. We can we can handle that Be, as long as we have that strong community. We have to have a group of strong masculine men because those strong masculine men are the ones who are going to help us spread the pain of that negativity out and take that negativity, turn it into a positive so that we can give it back to our wife. Watch what happens if anything ever bad happens and you're talking to your wife and you have to share some negativity. She's going to she's going to try to stand for it. She's going to ha- she'll handle it the best she can, but you can see her phys- physiology shift a bit as she worries about the negativity that you gave to her. Then turn around and give her a solution to what that problem is and watch how her whole demeanor again blossoms and she opens up more while men we come together when another one is struggling when another one is having a problem we will turn to the the men in that community will come around and gather around that that one man who has a problem whether he is in financial dire straits or he is you know or he's just lost a uh, lost a loved one but if you are coming to your wife day in and day out with Every single one of your emotional, with all your emotional baggage and dumping it on her. One, she's not going to see you as a man. She is not going to see you as a masculine man. She is not going to see you as the man she needs in her life. So she is going to turn to somebody who will fit that need for her. If you don't come to her, I'm not saying you don't share anything with your wife. You can even share your problems. Just don't be dumping everything about your life onto her because it's one, it's not going to help you. It's not serving you in any way to just be using her as a, as a emotional dumpster. It doesn't work. It doesn't help her. And you're just going to wear her out emotionally and she's going to want to leave. This is again, another reason why you need the, the pillar of, of a man's community, because when you work hard and you have stuff to say, you need to be able to offload those negative thoughts onto your, onto your, the guys in your group. 
when you unload those things on the guys on the group, they are going to help you fix that problem and have a solution. So when you go to your wife and you go to tell her, yeah, well, I got fired, but that's okay. I found another job with Randy. Randy, he's got me covered. He's put me, he's, he's got a spot for me. That is how you present the negative to your wife. The other way that marriage, a marriage will fail is because of our favorite guy, our, the guy that we just love to just talk about all the time. That is the nice guy. And that is because sadly, nice guys think women aren't that smart. Nice guys think they can pull the wool over a woman's eyes for ever. They think that they can, they can manipulate a woman into doing whatever they want. And sadly, the fact is that women are pretty damn smart. They are a lot smarter than a nice guy wants to give them credit for. And they figure out that they're being manipulated really early on. And at first they may be tolerant. They may, because they love them. They're, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just have to try to see if I can get them to stop manipulating that way. But it doesn't work. And so she starts shutting down. She starts trying to do anything because she's just, just trying to be manipulated by the nice guy. And so it causes a, an emotional disconnection and women then start showing their frustration and their anger. And so they become the guy, the women that nice guys often complain about. So, you know, the lack of sex, stop having sex as often as they, as the nice guy would like for them to have. They start getting nagged about on stuff that they need to get, the nice guy needs to get done. They, and it just causes guys to try to do more and more and more stuff that ends up causing the women to become more resistant. And it becomes a big mess and it will fail every single time because a nice guy cannot, it, Nice guys are manipulative bastards and they absolutely do not want their wife to have their own emotions because they are afraid of other people's emotions and they're afraid of their own emotions. They emotions are very unsettling to them. So what does all of this point to? And this is the key point. This is actually why divorces fail. And this is actually what can save your marriage. And those are thoughts. Thoughts are the main reason behind, like I said, all divorces. Even when you're looking at the three A's, a person's thoughts are behind each of those three three words. The abuse, well, they feel like they don't have any power, and so they do something to get power. It's a thought. Addiction, oh, I don't have enough joy or I have enough, don't have enough satisfaction, so I'm going to go take a hit off this bong so I can get a little satisfaction. I can, I'm going to take a, take a big old uh, pinch of dip and put it in my, between my cheek and gum, fill in the blank. You know, (laughs) anytime a man stops with what he was known for doing, it's because of a thought. Thoughts keep men from going for the, that brass ring. It's the thoughts that keep you staying safe on the couch. You find it easier to watch a sports uh, sports game than to actually go out, grab a racket, and start playing whatever pickleball is. You know, to go walk. It keeps you from doing anything for those four pillars. You're going to have a thought against it. You're going to have a thought as to why your wife is being, you know, is being cold towards you. Why? I uh, I can't answer that one, but it's. Your thoughts as to why she's being cold. Now, is she being cold because it's needed? Maybe I don't know. I'm not. I'm not the uh, the the guy at, at at hand here. But I do know that the thoughts that she has about the circumstances going on is why she has stopped being loving towards you. That is why she has drawn away, why she hangs out in the bedroom, why she does what she does and doesn't care to interest you. It's the thoughts that she has or the thoughts that you have that causes an affair, that causes an addiction, that turns people to abuse. It is your thoughts that cause your results. 
thoughts. Your thoughts create your results. Thoughts are the most powerful item in a person's world, inside of your world. Your world is what is in between your your ears, behind your eyes. You can actually think of a divorce as the worst, most horrible thing around, and it will become the worst, most horrible thing around in your in in your experience. Or you can say that this is something that, to be learned from, and you can actually have a very good divorce. Or you could actually decide, you know what, I'm going to take full responsibility for all my actions and change myself. And there's a chance that your changes could save your marriage. All of a sudden, your wife realizes, oh, wait a minute. He's being something that I've not ever thought he would be ever again. Oh, he's going to go back. And she may even think that. She may have the thoughts of uh, he, he's going to go back and continue on with the marriage until she, after the, the, or continue with the divorce until after the divorce is final. And then she realizes, holy smokes, he still made those changes. I screwed up. Now, is that on you? No, those are her thoughts. It's one of the great things. She's going to do stuff that wants to try to invoke an emotional response from you. Your choice in all the matter is, do you want that to, to happen. You can have the best time going through a divorce if you wanted to have that mindset. Or you can have just be the, a completely destroyed, distraught, humiliated man, a hunk of meat that used to be a man that was respected. But again, that's your choice. Thoughts are amazing. Thoughts are so uh, some powerful things, and that's what I like to work with. I like to mess with your thinking. I like to ch- take what your th- what your thoughts are and question them. Push back on on those thoughts, those beliefs that you have. When beliefs are nothing more than thoughts that you perceive to be true, and if you want to change your world, you want to have a relationship with your wife that you can still. Hold your head up about, even if the divorce carries through, that's something we can work on. We can work on you becoming the better man, you becoming a man who's going to take this divorce. He's going to ride through it. There's going to be hell at times. It is going to be scary. It's going to be painful. It's going to be emotionally rough. And on the other end, you might even be come out on the other side stripped raw. Or you can come out on the other end and be better for it. You can be the better man. You could have used this divorce as a crucible to melt yourself, all the essences that you are, melt it all down into just a puddle of, of, of liquid Scrape the slag off because slag, nothing. If I don't know if you're aware of what, when it comes to smelting, when slag is the impurities that have risen to the top. And if you take, you can actually remove those impurities and you have a stronger metal. And we're going to be working on a program here soon. Actually, I'm working on that program right now. It's going to be open here real soon called the Divorce Crucible. And we're, that is just what we're doing. We're using the divorce as a means to become stronger men, become more refined men, become the better man. If you're interested in, in joining me in this, on this adventure, I, nothing's out as of yet, but it's going to be coming out here soon. Shoot me an email over at brian at relaxedmail.com. That's brian with a Y at relaxedmail.com. And I will get you added to a list that, that lets you know. Uh, first few things that are going to be happening. Actually, the first thing that's going to go on is uh, we're just going to have a Q&A. I want to know what it is your your struggle is. I can guess. That's all I can do. But if I know, if I have a better idea of what type of, of problem you're facing, we can get a lot a lot finer in the details. We're going to have a little Q and a, a few 
a couple of weeks down the road from now. And like I said, if you're interested, sign up. Let's get. I want to see what uh, what we can get get going. I want to see where you are struggling the hardest with in the, in your divorce. So, guys, with that, I want to thank you again for listening. If you have any questions, have any any thoughts, share it out. Brian at relaxmail dot com. And if you this you know somebody who is going through a divorce, you know, someone who is struggling, has got problems and is needing some, some help is needing some words of, of, of encouragement, send this over to them. If this resonated with you and you think there's somebody in your, in your social media group that could stand, could benefit from listening to this, share this out, share it on your Facebook, Twitter, Take a screenshot of it and share it onto, onto Instagram. Share it wherever you think you can find you have men who need your help or need help and need to listen to this particular podcast. Men help other men. That's one of the best things we can do for, for our guys. So share it out. And if you are going through a divorce, reach out to me. I'll be able to help you. I can get you we can get you going to in a in a direction to where you would be unrecognizable to your soon to be ex-wife. All right. So guys, thank you again for listening. Y'all have a great rest of the week. Keep your heads up. It's going to get better. It really is. So till next week, y'all take care and bye. <music>